Integrated web pages for automation systems can be excellent tools, especially when it comes to diagnostics and control. Let me show how easy we can do these. First step is we're going to choose a current project. I'm going to click open. Ultimately, I don't want to go back and recreate anything I've done for my current automation system. I just want to tie to it. That's it. So now that the project is opened, just go to the project view section of it. I'm going to choose the PLC. Double click on the device configuration. Give focus to that CPU. Click on properties. And in the properties, the first thing that happens to pop up is the integrated web server. If I check this box, there's a little security note that pops up that tells us, hey, wait a second, do you want to have a password? For this application, I don't want to do that. All I've got to do now is give focus back to the CPU and click download. Now he's going to compile the fact that there's also a web server integrated with the code of the CPU. Click load. Now finished. Now we have a web server integrated. If I go over to this iPad, first thing I want to do is click on settings, go to the Wi-Fi, enable the Wi-Fi, and as you can see, I actually do have a wireless access point for this particular project right now. It is S7-1200, that's the one I want. I'm choosing that. And next thing I want to do is go to the browser. I want to find the IP address for the 1200. All I have to do is give focus to it, right click, properties, go to Ethernet address. There's my Ethernet address. Click on the field and 192.168.0.1 go. So now I have the web server up. If I enter it, the first page is an example representation graphically of the 1200 with the status LEDs, green, red, whatever they may be, including some basic information, IP address, and part number. We've also got an identification page that gives a little bit more detail about this unit, as well as a communication page. So the next thing is we can actually create faults, for instance, with this automation system. If I go over here and turn turn the potentiometer and create an analog fault. I'll notice that I get some status LEDs on the first page. Something is wrong. What I can do is go to the module information page and I'll see some red wrench here. If I click on that, now it actually tells me that the analog module has something wrong with it. And then I can go to the diagnostic buffer, just like I would in the engineering system. And ultimately I can see I have a high limit exceeded on channel zero. Once I realize what the physical problem is, I can go back to the system, solve the problem, and then in even in the web server, I'll see and recognize the fault has been solved. Next thing that we can do is we can go to the variable status page. And as long as I know the tag within the control system, I can monitor any variable I want. So let me clear this one. And let's type in one of the variables that I know for this particular program. Click Go. I can actually see the status of this particular bit in this instance. This is motor one. This is a ceiling circuit we have in this program. If I go over here and turn it on, I can actually see the status has changed. So you can monitor any analog, digital, bit, byte, word, whatever you want to in this particular web server. So we're able to see all the diagnostics that a 1200 system can provide right out of the box, even in our web server. Next step is control code. Wouldn't it be great if we could tie control code directly to the current automation system and command it from this iPad? Let's do that. First thing I want to do is go to the main OB. Here's our standard seal and circuit. I need to tie the virtual logic to the actual logic in this particular system. What I want to do is add some ORs. So there's a normally open contact, and here is a normally closed contact. And what I want to do is tie it to our tags from our global library. What we're able to do is create HTML code for a web page. You can put that in the global library and reuse it over and over and over again for all of your smart devices, including the tags associated for code for those. So let me go to the library. Here's our user-defined tags. Let me pull them back into the project. Now I physically has my tags and this code, and all I have to do is tie them together. There's the stop. There's the start. So now our virtual logic and our actual logic are now tied together. 
The next step is we want to add a www block because this is going to be a user defined web page and we, we want to be able to call this virtual logic against the actual logic in the CPU. Let's go to instructions, web server, and let's add this block. There's the www block. The control data block is always 333. And the output, I'm just typing in a tag name, AWP, and I'm going to use a default define tag. It's fine. Whatever the default is, I'm okay with that. So now all of our logic for the control code is now complete. Next step is the HTML actual web page itself. What we need to do is go back to the device configuration, give folks the CPU, click on properties, and then go down to the web server section and we have two fields here. The first field is HTML directory field. So let me go find the actual point where we have this in our system. It is that one. Click OK. And then I actually need to point to the page as well. So the page is called index. Click on open. So now all I need to do is click this Generate Blocks button. So we'll actually generate the actual HTML code for the web server in the uh, system itself, and we'll put it into the actual project. Now that they're there, all I have to do is give Focus CPU, download that. Now it's going to compile the user-generated uh, web page along with the code. Click Load. And then last but not least, we can click Finished, and we should have a fully functional system. So now the code has all been downloaded to the CPU. All we have to do is go over to the iPad. Let's refresh the standard web page. I can choose user web page at the bottom and launch it. Now I have my user defined web page for control functionality. I have a logon screen as well, which we didn't create a login, so we don't need to use it. And we got a control screen as well. I can click on start. And as you can see, I can completely control this automation system with this iPad, and I did it just a matter of minutes. Now that is engineering efficiency.